Okay, let's call the meeting to order. And all members with the exception of Miss Washington, uh, Kevin, uh, who else is? Lucille? Where's Stan? Stan Where's Lucille? Lucille? We're missing Stan and Lucille, Joe. Oh yeah, Lucille yeah, and Lucille Stan. And Stan. I don't and have Kevin. Lucille's number at home. Kevin. So. I mentioned Kevin. What oh, about you hear from anybody, uh, Nancy? Nope, I didn't hear from anybody else. Okay. What about All right, the, let's uh, move on to uh, uh, review and I move myself out of the minutes photo of February 9th. I'll move approval of the minutes of February 9th. Motion by Bob. Seconded. Seconded by Alan. Discussion. I got, a, I got one comment, Joe. Yes, Mark. Um, the uh, new business project update downs paragraph, about halfway down, there's a sentence that says, Scott explained humidity might be creating the paneling from deteriorating. I think that needs to be worded better. Instead of creating the paneling from deteriorating, Okay. Uh, how about it um, like causing it to separate? Yeah, ca right? right. Causing the paneling to warp. How's that? Is that right. warp? Okay. Got it. That's all I got. Okay. Any other corrections? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions. It's unanimous. New business project update, Downs. Who's going to speak for Downs? I will. Screen on. Everybody see my screen? Yes. No. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Nice to see everybody again. Um, mm -hmm. Our update for actually March 16th um, for our budget. We'll start there. Uh, we have a total of $319,578 in approved change orders with a total re revised GMP of $19,894,000. We have $153,000 in pending approximate change order requests for a total anticipated final GMP of $20,047,000. Um, in regards to the balance of monies on the owner's contingency, there is $18,111. And owner's soft costs are obviously, uh, they're spent. So this is the main uh, fee. There's $18,000 left in the owner's contingency. Okay. Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, for change order proposals for approval. So we feel that we've come to on uh, COP 310 for heads in Maine for the organization, uh, for the well uh, option. We feel we've exhaust. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we feel we've exhausted our uh, efforts as far as what we can oh, jump around here of what we can conclude with putting this together with the well. And um, as far as using electrical, um, a landscaper and a well subcontractor to put this thing together. So we've come to a total cost of $134,367 versus the $149,260 originally proposed if we were tapping off uh, into the street with MDC. Now, this is the proposal here. Um, some things that we need to review with this number. Um, there's two scenarios. Now this includes, you know, obviously installing the well to about 500 feet, um, providing a shed, to put in the pump equipment and a panel, electric panel with a flat and a light, uh, trenching for the underground conduit coming off of where we already have underground conduit on the drawing, which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, making all the connections to the building. Um, 
as far as the well portion of this proposal goes. Everything with the heads and main and the additional piping to complete your irrigation system and your labor hasn't changed. Although I have gotten word that um, material has been hard to come by lately for uh, plumbing and piping, uh, particularly underground PVC. Um, apparently it has something to do with, with Texas and the storms down there have shut down some key manufacturing plants. So it's something that we have to just be aware of um, as far as when we go through this process, if we're gonna approve or not, because we still think we can get the material that we need for this project. That being said, uh, this $19,000 uh, to actually complete your well system has not changed. What has is the electrical budget, which the electrical sub has a proposal for $14,700 to connect all the power from the building out to the, where the shed location will be. You've got the well driller at 35,000 and then a shed budget of $2,500, okay? Um, and then our costs are, are in there as well uh, for management and for uh, supervision, okay? Now, I wanna go to the drawing for a minute that I've attached. And what you're looking at here is a site has built. I'm gonna blow it up because it's hard to read. Wow. Okay. Uh, someone has some background noise if they don't mind muting. I appreciate it, thank you. So if you see these, this blue outline here, this is your building. And this is the, boy, the mechanical room and the electrical room is somewhere over here. And we have conduit that we've put in the ground, underground, that goes out to right about over here, or actually right here, okay? So we're gonna have to dig a trench to get the electrical conduit to the shed in this location. Now, the reason we show an alternate location is because there is a code for the health department that a well, any well has to be within, has to be further than 25 feet away from any drainage structure. And as you can see in the parking lot over here, we've got a catch basin, okay? And then we have a drainage structure here and this is piping underground, so we don't really have to worry about that. So we think we can put it here, but we're not, 100% sure yet until the, the well subcontractor actually gets contracted and actually put out there, calls before you dig to make sure all the <laughs> facilities are located and can do the exact measurements of where he has to drill his hole to make sure that he can keep a 25 foot distance away from these two structures, okay? Particularly this one, really. Um, if he can't and he has to go out towards the softball field, which the soft, if I zoom out a little bit, this is the north field, this is the eastern field, this is the softball field. If he has to go out more towards the softball field, your electrical price jumps by about $12,000 because you have to extend the underground conduit and you have to use a thicker wire, which you know adds a lot of cost coming out to this area, all right? So that's just one caveat of this proposal that's written into uh, the electrician's proposal. Uh, if I get to the sheet here. Okay. I saw that. $12,000 right. additional. Yep. If he's got to go 300 additional feet over. So that's why, Bob. Okay. So that's one item that we have to be concerned about. The next item is um, with Saima, the well drilling subcontractor. Let me get to his proposal. Whoops. If for some reason, if you'll notice that all his pricing, while he has a total estimate, his cost is an estimate because he has per foot pricing. He's figuring he only has to drill 510 feet to get 100 gallons per minute because this irrigation system requires 100 gallons per minute of water flowing through in order to accurately pump the right amount of water to the heads that are going to spray out into the field. 
all right, in big sections, okay? If he can't get 100 gallons per minute and he has to drill deeper, then you've got about $25 per foot the deeper you go, which adds to your steel casing um, number as well, right? So if he's got to drill another well and go another, you know, 500 feet, you know, you're looking at another $15,000. So what we're banking on at the moment is that Bloomfield has a history of a high water table throughout the area and that Lima has done quite a bit of work in Bloomfield as far as installing wells and doesn't necessarily see a problem with getting 100 gallons per minute, but there's not too many services where he's actually, you know, having to uptake that much water. Of course, he's experienced in doing so. Um, but those are our two factors that we have to be aware of when approving this proposal is that one, locating where the well can actually go. And if it has to get moved, it affects the electrical price by about $12,000. And two, if we have to do extra drilling or go down further, we could be spending money there, which its cost could grow up to about approximately $15,000. Well, that would be the worst case scenario, I would think. All right. And that with only $18,000 left in your budget is something that needs to be considered. Joe? Go ahead. Joe, I have a question. Yes, Bob. Yeah. I was, oh, back to the first page, earlier page, Scott. Yes. Okay. In the pending COP is 153.046. Yes. What's in that? What is it, right? Okay. Well, it's your hundred and is that thirty-four thousand dollars? Thirty-four plus eight the eighteen. Oh good. Nope, it's your hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. It's your um we have additional bond costs on the site for thirty-six hundred dollars. Okay. And you have a budget out there that we're holding for $15,000 for the stove. Okay. So that, that is what comprises of your $153,000 pending change order. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the other question I have is the driller's proposal. It says it includes wiring the pump off a whip from a 100 amp panel. That means the price is included in his proposal? Yes, it does. So I had that ferreted out and I wrote it because he didn't write it. Um, but what it means, Bob, is that while the electrician is going to bring that line from the building into the shed and the electrician is going to put a panel on the wall and an outlet and a light, the well driller is going to tap off that panel with his voltage and bring okay. it down to the pump and he's going to okay. take that portion. So the electrician doesn't have that work, which I had to have them back a little bit of that out. So he didn't have that work because it was a double dip that I discovered. So throughout the process. So that's why that note is there for if he does get contracted, it's going in his contract that way. All right. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Yes, Mark. Mark, uh, while you're on that page, down near the bottom, he's got, please also note pump prices can vary on a lower volume well, what does that mean? Well, I think what that means is that if your well doesn't produce 100 gallons per minute, he could be upsizing the pump so that it does. And that might be another option. The problem is, is that he is not going to really kind of outline what the, that pricing could be because it's like a variable. You know, it varies depending on what pump you need. And we don't know. It's an unknown. So he's got our per, per foot pricing for if we have to go deeper, but if we're finding we're going deeper, we're not getting hundred gallons per minute. And, you know, let's, let's put it this way. You know, if we have to drill another hole, we're going to need another pump, right? So we're going to need two pumps. So that that's where the price starts to go up a bit. Okay. It's not something that if we have a lower volume, well, we can live with because we're going to have a more expensive pump? No. Yeah, it's a possibility, yep. Okay, so we might be spending more money on deeper or a second 
well, the whole, or we might be spending more money on a pump. On a pump, right. It, it just depends what happens, Mark. Right to be determined. Yeah, like if you're getting 90 gallons per minute and it's like, geez, we only need to get like 10 more, maybe we're upsizing the pump so that it comes up faster and they can get it and there's enough flow where that can take it on. I, we just don't know. Okay. Do we know where we stand with being able to put the well in the, in the preferred location, the closer location? We don't because after doing some research, it's actually not the building department that issues the permit, it's the health department. And the health department's comment was the same as the wells driller is that, yes, as long as you're 25 feet away from any drainage structure, you'll be fine. But you know, it depends on your underground utilities. It depends where you're putting the well that you can achieve that, you know, on, as far as how you locate the well. And uh, so at the moment, we don't have a hard response on that. But isn't the location you showed there in the red bubble 25 feet away from the drainage structures? Yes, Mark, I think it could be. But again, I can't make that determination. The well driller has to make that determination based on how he lays everything out and how he has to drill as well. And unfortunately, I cannot get him to do that. He won't do that without a contract. Scott, this is Dave. Um, just a thought or comment to the building committee. Um, since day one, the idea of a pool potentially being a part of this project in the future. So Scott, could you zoom out just a little bit to show the extent of the building a little more, at least at North Edge? Um, so I don't know, <laughs> obviously, we we talked about a pool this is actually fairly far out of the way it wouldn't be in the footprint but we did talk about if anything was ever added to this building for whatever reason that parking that runs in that drive that runs north of the gym would get moved up uh to build an addition and so the north field would start to get turned over to parking and drives if you ever extended this facility. Um, if you're going to go that far, I guess at that point, you can take the electrical out of a shed, get rid of the shed and put it in a, in a new building. So, but I just want to bring that up that this could be in the way in the future. If anything ever happens with this facility. Other yeah. questions? Yeah, I see that. So Scott, potentially we're looking at another uh, 12,000 if we have to move the well. Yeah. And another 15,000 worst case scenario if we have to go deeper. Yeah, plus a pump. Because Mark brought up a good point. You would need another pump if you have to drill a hole. So, it, you know, you could probably figure, you know, worst case, twenty thousand dollars. I had to peg it down, but that would be pretty bad. I mean, then we're really not getting the water we need at all. And uh, does that mean there would be two pumps? Yes. Correct. correct. Yep. Scott, this is Sten Casperson. Hey, Sten. Uh, I came in a little late. I apologize that these have been asked. With your costs, how do these compare to getting water from the MDC? So with the MDC, it was 100 and $49,000 versus $134,000 for the well. Wow. I didn't know the MDC would be that expensive plus the cost of the water going forward. Yeah, well, th this got more expensive, Stan, if you recall, when the MDC line got demoed um, out of yep. your field. 
yep. are abandoned. And when you get out into the middle of the road, you're dealing with a whole nother permit process. And now you're dealing with replacing asphalt and a yep. road and it becomes really problematic and costly. Uh, two more items, I think. Uh, you need electricity for these well pumps. <clears throat> As I recall, you put conduits underground north of the building uh, and you could just string electricity through that from the building. Is that correct? So you don't have to dig up pavement to get electricity in there? Correct. We have conduit. Uh, I could draw an arrow, I guess. We have conduit going out to right about here. Um, let me see if we can make that thicker. Doesn't it cross the road? Yeah, it crosses the parking lot into the grass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right about in here. Actually, it might go out a little further now that I think about it. I'm looking at where the walks are. But right. then we have to dig a new trench going to the shed. To no, I, that I understand. Yep. On the subject of a quote unquote shed, uh, this bothers me a little bit. This is an active site. Um, I'll get right to the point. Lots of kids who like to know what's inside things. Uh, the possibility of a car, a truck, a mower, whatever, hitting it. Why not put this shed with its controls on a pad next to the building, the human services facility building? Well, then why, have why put a, a shed out there as opposed to a more permanent fence structure? I mean, the well, well is uh, underground, so you know, that's going to have a cap on it somewhere. Then there's a few reasons you wouldn't do that. Um, because then if you put a shed somewhere in here where the dumpster pad is, which you don't have room for, um, you would then be trenching out the sidewalk and then you would be trenching across the um, parking lot to get to the well and you would be ripping up your pavement. Oh, I don't, if you say so, I don't understand that, but okay. Well, your conduit is coming, your conduit is already underground, right, Stan? Coming out right. of the building over at this door. Yep. So if you put a shed here, how am I going to access that conduit to get electricity from the building? And then even if I found a way, you still have to get to the shed and get power out to the pump that's in yep. the well. Well, okay. Uh, the one word description shed might be fleshed out a little bit to indicate to anybody it's a secure shed of some sort. Yeah, it would be lockable. Lockable, fenced in, vandal proof. It would not or, be fenced in and it would go on gravel pad. Yep. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any questions, Joe? Yes, go ahead, Alan. So how does this, what does this do to our budget? It puts us like right on the line as long as there's no problem, is that correct? Well, your budgets then, if, if you approve this $134,000, you're still, you're, that in, this number is in, including the fact that the $134,000 is within this pending number. So the $18,000 doesn't change. You still have $18,000 left in your budget. But Problem is if things if get- You have to sneak another well. Yeah, if you got to sneak more money in, then this goes down, right? We have, well, we have no more money. Correct. And if we have to move the electrical out farther, well, we got $6,000 left. <laughs> right. We're, we're right on the line. Yes, you are. Scott, quick question. This is Tom. Well, I, I, got a, I got a follow up question. Go ahead, Alan. Do we have a plan to come up with that shortfall? Mark, Joe, anybody? Well, as I understand, as I understand yeah. it, um, the uh, $15,000 for the stove, which is accounted for in that $153,000, uh, could have a, a source outside of our project. So that could make up the difference. What would that be? <laughs> that source? Yes. You got to talk to Nancy about that. Yeah, we don't. Know That's that all I know. Certainty, but... I didn't hear your budget mentioned for that. So I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Okay. Know. So. Okay. All right. So it, so it is doable without going begging to the council. <laughs> 
that's not an option, right? No. <laughs> right. Okay. Scott, quick quick question. This is Tom. Yeah. So you, we're going to know on that first $12,000 uh, potential expenditure very quickly. So <clears throat> in other words, if, if for some reason that comes back and we, you do need to move to the alternate location, we're going to have another discussion to to make the expenditure of the additional 12. Correct. So is, at that, at what point have we committed dollars to this process that we wouldn't get back, right? So you issue the contract, he starts this process, he comes back to you and says, hey guys, I met with the building department, the health department, and there's no way I can get it here. We got to move it. So we need, you know, we got to pay the electrician an additional 12,000. At that point, how much would we owe? If we said, hey, okay, we're, we're going to cancel. We don't want to do any more. Um, how much would, would the, the town be uh, responsible to pay? And maybe you don't know, know that answer, but I, I don't, and maybe. I, at maybe the moment, I would say the permitting costs, but, um, you know, which I don't know what that cost is. Um, well, he's got I would have to have a very well. frank conversation with the well driller that, look, you're going to have to go through the permit process and locate this thing. And if there's some labor to, I'm sure there's labor to go out there and, and locate, which I, I don't see being extremely expensive um, before you buy any material. Yeah. You know, and then you're really keeping your cost down if it can't work out for some reason. Yeah. I'm guessing that what I'm saying is that I'm kind of brainstorming as we're, we're talking right. here. Maybe we want to add some language in this contract that gives us an opportunity to, to cancel it with a certain amount, just so, you know, if, if we need to, well, there's a value. We don't need to go backwards. Yep. I think a point of cancellation is you drill 500 feet, 300 feet, and if it comes up way below need, then you just say that's literally sunk money and you turn to some other alternative. You're not going to know whether to not uh, try this out until you know if there's enough water. It's that simple. Well, that's a second point of possible cancellation. The right. First one, the first one being the location of the well, and the second right. one being the necessary depth of the well. Yeah, and water flow. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to have some sort of cap here. If, if for some reason the decision is to, to cancel that, we, there's, there's some cap at the expenditure that everybody's willing to accept. The so they break the contract in phases, I think, subject to cancellation. But then there's the other end of it where, you know, the, te the landscaper's number is a solid lump sum number. That doesn't change. So do you still approve the landscaper's number in full? And if you can't do the well, at least get all of this material into the ground. Of course, your only problem is... <laughs> is you're open-ended on where you're tying in for water. So I guess that- I, you know, I think you approve the whole thing and, and you go forward as if we're gonna, the whole scope is gonna be complete. And we just have a conversation with Saima that there, you know, if there is a point where we need more money, then there's gotta be a point where we can terminate the contract and know what the uh, exposure is for the town. We don't wanna come back and then he says, oh, no, I mean, you're gonna owe me 50% of my contract regardless of regardless of if I do the work or not, you know? So we yeah. wanna be able to write a tight contract. We do, but we also have to remember for releasing TC landscaping with these subs, then, and you're, and you're waiting to see what's gonna pan out. You can't go and, we can't go and tell TC landscaping, all right, we've contracted you Oh, I see what you're Go saying. Go ahead and release all your material. We're going to have to say, you're going to have to put a hold on your material until we understand what's happening with the well. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> right. Just say, hey, go. And then all of a sudden you're stuck with all this material that, yeah, you do want to put in the ground, but now you're going to yeah. have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And we want to get it in the planting season too. <clears throat> Which we're heading into. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Well, given that there are only two choices 
MDC or drill a well, and they're roughly within ten to fifteen thousand dollars of each other. The the question is the same: Do you decide to go with it? You can't cancel the MDC. I don't think that would be a absolute non-attainable once they start work. Right. Um, so I think you have to make a choice and hope that you get a, a good results or you find another $50,000 somewhere. Well, you also got to keep in mind that you're saving the town about 20,000 in water a year. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. Well, that was one of my points, Alan, early on in this discussion, not today, tonight. Uh, forecast out five years, 10 years return on the investment to the town if you go with a well. Yeah. MDC, you have to pay the water. So you know that that's just a continuing cost after the capital investment. Here you want different water, but basically you're hoping to offset the need to pay MDC for their water. Where does that come out? I have no idea. 10 year return on the investment would be really good if you can get it. So yeah, plus the price of water is gonna keep going up anyways. From the MDC, so it could even be less than 10 years. <laughs> Unless we got a contract, you know, for volume. <laughs> very, very good. Um, so the only other question is the likelihood of sourcing the financing for that stove someplace else if we needed that to cover some overrun on this well project. Okay. It's probably not enough, Joe. Not if you go to, two, not if you have to go to a much more expensive pump or you have a need to go to two wells and two pumps and all the electrical. It's the classic problem. You drill in the ground, you don't know what you're gonna get until you right. drill in the ground. It's worse than building a building. <laughs> no, you know you're gonna get a building. Yeah. You don't know if you're gonna get water. Right. Well now, Scott, again, what is a What's the total cost, worst case scenario again? I guess I thought it was less than 20,000. Well, no, I, I would say it's 12,000 additional for the electric and then approximately $20,000 additional for the well, depending on what happens. So 32. Yeah. Call it 50, a nice round number or 40. <coughs> Yeah. Scott, how much has already been spent for going towards this irrigation? I mean, stuff has already been purchased as well. So there's already been an investment made. No, um, we, we already shook that out. Remember um, the heads? No, right. How much have they paid for what they already own? There's already some infrastructure in place, Scott, I think. Yeah, I yeah, I know that. We've, we've already gone through that process, $25,000. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Joe? So, yes, Mark. Um, I, I move we go forward uh, with this well, as suggested by Tom, uh, to limit our exposure to the point where we can make a decision on uh, whether we have to relocate the well or not, as shown on the drawing. I'll, se I'll second that. Uh, motion by Mark, seconded by, was that you, Stan? No, Bob. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, discussion. Yeah, I have a comment, Joe. Bob. Yeah, uh, if, the co if, it, if MDC water costs is 20,000 a year, and if we need more money, I think it's gonna be easy to make the case that the additional money we need is gonna be repaid within a couple of years. Because that each year we're saving twenty thousand dollars, and if it doesn't, and we don't have to spend that, 
then in in seven years we recouped and caught the cost of going to with a well just by that alone not counting any increase in, in, in water costs from the mdc so i think it's not going to be that difficult to sell if we have to do it i'm hoping we don't other comments Okay, if there are no further comments, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions. It's unanimous. Let's hope uh, we stay where it's currently designed and 500 feet is enough. Yep. Keep our fingers yep. crossed, right? But we'll go through the process, uh, as Tom mentioned, um, with the with the subcontractor and uh, take it from there. Yeah. If I may ask, Scott, do you have a tentative schedule given an approval to go ahead? Um, everyone's getting really busy. <laughs> so <laughs> I would like to do it in April. And uh, that's what we'll push for. And uh you know, no one's really given me a straight answer as far as the landscaper or the water. I mean, the electrician, he's fine. It's really comes down to the landscaper and the, uh, the well driller, but, you know, I, I think we can make it work. Um, but, you know, we, we were waiting for this answer. So now I got to go after it. Right. Right. Well, I think an input to the well driller is we know you're busy. We know you've got other jobs, but this job needs to have some we need to we need to dig in the ground to find out whether this is going to be viable or not. Yep, absolutely. We will do that. Okay, good. Okay, good. So we'll get that going this week. Um, the last COP I had was number three seventeen. Uh, the site subcontractor had um, finalized all his costs finally um, at the end of last year. Um, you know, as we had gone through his retainage costs and his final change orders for the project. Um, now that he's got his, all his final change orders totaled, um, his bonding company has come back to him with the additional cost for the increase of $464,000 to his contract for $3,677. Um, so he does have an additional bond cost that he's got to pay um, based on the volume that he had to take on for bonding capacities. And this is a, a typical cost that does happen at the end of a job. And frankly, this job really didn't see much of that as far as additional bonding costs. This might only be the second one that we've seen and that we will see because this is the, uh, the landscaper maybe, but we'll have to see how he totals out. I'll move approval change your proposal 317 in the amount of 3,607. $77. Motion by Bob. Second. Second by Alan. Discussion? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, a few more items. Okay. The action items, Joe. Yep. Uh, so spring's coming. And one, skate, one thing the landscaper does have to do, no matter what, <laughs> is replace the plugs in the rain gardens based on Fuss and O'Neill's review uh, from last year with the punch list. That's the last punch list item left for the project. So he will be coming back to do that. And that's coming up in April. That's under warranty, right? Yes, sir. Uh, certificate of occupancy. So we have notified the building department, as we mentioned last meeting, the roof guard rails have been installed. We don't have any other CO items. Um, I have been dealing with the building inspector. She did have an issue with not having our um, total as built for the project plans. It didn't seem to upload right into their system, but I was able to get that to her a different way. So uh, as far as I know, I've satisfied everything she was looking for. And um, <clears throat> I don't see any issue with the town receiving their CO for this for this building. All right, so just waiting for her to follow through follow up with that. 
Uh, warranty issues. Um, so the last we last we met, um, there was a building leak that there was a wet tile, uh, what appeared to be a wet tile or a stain tile, not wet tile, a stain tile in the food storage area. Uh, we went and reviewed that, and uh, we did not see that there were any signs of a leak. Um, we think it was an old leak from back when uh, we turned over the project, because I do recall there was one over there, and uh, we replaced the tile accordingly. So nothing has showed oh, us don't do with this any weather that we've had. So this is an item that we are going to close out um, for that particular area. Um, as far as the mezzanine, um, I did note there was a possible reemergence of a building leak at the mezzanine ceiling. Um, I reviewed it a couple times. I haven't seen anything pop out further, and I'm still just kind of keeping my eye on it to make sure that it's not something that's going to happen. Um, so I'm just kind of holding that in place at the moment. Ice maker. Um, so the ice maker bin was replaced last week. And uh, we do uh, want to wait a week for while it's operational to see that it's not going to leak again. And he also cleaned up, uh, Dave Malesko, the um, drainage piping underneath to make it a little more neat and functional, if you will. But um, Dave, how long have you had the ice maker filled at this point? We went, he completed it not last week, the week before, I believe. So it was the middle of last week. We opened it back up. We've right. seen no evidence of, of leakage. All right, good. Okay. Well, maybe I have the wrong. And they, they did a nice job. He did a nice job tying the pipe in it underneath there and um, it's suspended. So we, it's, it looks really good. All right. So at that point, I think we can start looking at the flooring and getting something scheduled for the uh, flooring that was damaged in there. And as well as looking at the floor, uh, which we went over with a vet in the cafe. Okay, so that will be my next task. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to leak again <laughs> before we went and did that. Um, so I will respond to all of you on how we're going to proceed with the schedule. Okay. Uh, the Japanese wall covering at the senior lounge. So we have reviewed this with the subcontractor and with Moser. Um, we did go through the HVAC system with the DPW, and from what we've determined, in 2020, when the building was unoccupied during COVID, -ish, you know, the, our COVID time, um, the system was still running as an occupied mode during the day, like there were people in the building. And from the information that we're getting from the HVAC controls contractor is that there can be instances and there has been a lot of them uh, this particular or last year particularly where you know buildings were not occupied because everything was shut down but it was running in occupied mode where it was starting to dry out because you didn't have people in there believe it or not we all create some sort of humidity um, and so the controls weren't fully accurate with not having people in the building and created a dry out type of scenario where we started receiving cracking and peel back, if you will, at the edges, anywhere there was a seam or anywhere there was an edge of a wall with this um, wall cover. So the long and the short of it is the warranty is out on it, but the painter is looking to help us out and come next week to do some re-gluing, well, to, to re-glue essentially the, um, the wall covering back onto its ends. Um, we have asked for a procedure on how they're gonna do that, just so we have that documented um, as far as how they're gonna do it efficiently and effectively. And uh, might look at using an even a, a stronger adhesive um, that we talked about with, uh, with Moser. So that's something we're currently working through now. And when I do have a date, um, Yvette and all the directors, I, I will send you guys an email, work that, work through that with you as far as before we schedule anything. Okay. Thank you. Uh, com comment, one comment on that? Yes. Um, you, uh, Dave and Yvette and Camilla, you think it's possible we can ask uh, Public Works about a uh, 
a cheapy humidistat in the room so that you can check it in the future and know if the room is drying out for any reason. Does that make sense? So we don't run into this again. I think that would be a reasonable request. Yeah, I we could at least dis fine. discuss with them. Yeah, I mean, it's something you'd have to monitor over time, you know, just to check on if you're, you know, think you, for some reason the air is drying out, you know, lower occupancy, weird weather, or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. if we have to fix it again, it's going to cost. Yeah. <laughs> and they're pretty cheap, those little, I have one. They're mm -hmm. pretty cheap. Thanks. Maybe. If we did monitor and find low humidity, do we have some method? of increasing the humidity? A bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a humidifier. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when you start kind of playing with the control system, yeah. right? Where maybe you're letting in a little more outside air if the air has more moisture in it and you're playing with how the controls are run in that particular room. Okay. Um, how much leeway you have with it in that particular room, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. And I think a little more homework would have to be done between DPW and the controls um, maintenance subcontractor, if you will, CTC to look at that. Cause it's not like we have built-in humidifiers like right. we're doing at a library right now where, you know, you can control what humidity right within the building you have based on water running through humidifiers that go into the system, right? But right. I mean, there are ways to do it with without a humidifier, but um, it does get a little complicated, but it can be done. All right. I just want to be sure that the, the, the humans or the inhabitants in that area are comfortable. That would be foremost of importance to me. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Any other questions? Anything further, Scott? Uh, last one. Uh, so we were made aware of some hot water issues in the large bathrooms particularly near senior services, but I think it turned out to be all the large bathrooms, which there's four. So uh, we did some homework and a little bit of investigating with the DPW and taking the covers off and looking what was under there based on what the drawings showed and what the engineer showed on their drawings. The plumbing subcontractor is still claiming that the, um, I'm gonna lose my uh, words here, the large, tempering valve system coming off the water heater in the boiler room is what sets the tone for the heat in the whole building. But there, the drawings did show very small tempering check valves that go under each faucet within the system. Um, now these sinks, when they were purchased, they're purchased as a unit, right? So it's not just a sink you're buying. It's the sink with everything that comes in under it. So as far as it was ordered, it appears that for whatever reason, that little um, tempering valve was not part of that order. And the Smittle showed options for it when it was given uh, for approval. And the long and short of it is, we don't think that tempering valve made it into the, um, into the sink. Whether you truly need it or not, I, I really can't say because I'm just not an expert as far as that goes. I mean, from what the plumber's saying, if you turn up the major tempering valve in the, in the boiler room, you're gonna achieve the same thing, but it's neither here nor there at this point and it's a problem. So we've already directed to him that he's gonna he's install those, those little valves in the, under the sinks. And he's looking to achieve that next week as well. Um, I just don't have a date yet, so I need to follow up with him. So I, I think that will solve any problems you might be having there that with your um, some of your people that are coming into the building and have issues with it. Thank you, Scott. Scott. Are you aware that we still don't have hot water in our two bathrooms? But that was the plumber was there, but it still no hot water. D Camilla, in your bathrooms? Uh huh. No, I am not aware of that. So yeah. So Scott, Thanks. if I could add, well, go ahead, Camilla. No, I was gonna say, I know a plumber came to check it out, but it wasn't repaired. So I just I mean, thought I, we were waiting for. I know. don't think it was our plumber. If it may have, if, I think is DBW aware of this? I don't think that that was. Yes. 
Okay, because yes. our oh, Dabby been... Caruso from Caruso, Dabby Caruso from Caruso Plumbing has been in the building. Um, okay, and, and, it, and it is it's bigger than just a um, uh, the the main bathrooms. It's it, it, to this point, it's all of the sinks. Um, hmm. I know the sink in the leisure services office isn't getting hot water, and the um, the sinks in the uh, the meeting rooms are not getting hot water either. How long has this been an issue? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Within the last month, maybe it is recent. Okay, so well, for us, it, it isn't recent. We haven't had hot water in the restroom in the senior services office restroom either. And again, I I learned a lesson that you don't talk to someone about it; you put it in writing because otherwise, there's no record. So, Lessons is there learned. hot water in any of the kitchens? Yes. So you have hot water when you turn on the faucet in the main kitchen and in the teaching kitchen? Not as of right now, not in our teaching kitchen. Um, it's, it's getting lukewarm at best. Yeah, like I said, that has been, that's new. Part of it is, is we can't give an actual time frame on the teaching kitchen because we haven't been utilizing the teaching kitchen sure. in quite, for quite some time due to the shutdown. Um, okay. That's a program that's been taken offline. Well, if all the all the hot water comes from one central source, mm -hmm. then it's pretty much a matter of tracing that source, putting a hand on a pipe and see where it's hot, where it's not. Turn on every single hot faucet in the building and see what happens. Yeah, I know our bathrooms were a topic of discussion at our meeting some time ago when Yvette and Dave first mentioned about the larger bathrooms. Um, yeah. And I just assume that was a part of the ongoing conversations. So I don't know how it, where it got lost. We do have hot water in our break room sink and in the food bank, there's hot water. Okay, so I, I will say this, um, I was not aware of that, Camilla. And um, the larger bathrooms, I believe in a vet, you can correct me if I'm wrong, were brought to our attention, I want to say last fall. A year, over a year they ago. Were, they were actually stop, stop. over a year ago, Scott. Okay. Summer of the building open. Well, that, that I, I can't speak to that because that was not an issue when we opened the building um, that was brought to us. I, it really wasn't made like a major issue to Downs until the fall of last year from the records that I have, just from my notes. You know, Scott, it, you know, it's possible that some of these problems are something to fix. Let's go one at a time. Al, Alan, Alan, go ahead. Okay. It's, it's pro possible some of these problems have been lingering, but a lot of these problems could also be the lack of people in the building at calling for hot water, you know, all day long because it has to travel the length of the building in some cases and it's cold the temperatures have been cold outside so That's a good point. It, it could be a while before the you know the hot water gets to the faucet yeah it's not like your house it's not like your house Alan. yeah well that's just to touch base on that we actually did that We're, when caruso plumman was in last week we let the water run for a good 10 minutes yeah. and it wasn't it was not achieving that no, that temperature lost. yeah what did cruz did say? it he doesn't know and, and i didn't go into detail with him um yeah. you know he was there on dpw business as much as i know him you know i helped him troubleshoot but that was the best that most of i got out of it uh, okay. why, don't you, why don't you double check with public works because i do know public works you know this issue has been going we've been trying to troubleshoot it for a while yeah. um, there was some advice given to public works about maybe changing the temperatures at the uh, source. And I'm wondering now hearing that there's cold water basically throughout the whole building, if they turned it down or something like that, if it was something that was attempted to be remedied by public works that ended up causing an issue where we didn't think one existed before. So maybe if you could just touch base with them to try to see what they've done with their um, with uh, the contractor they brought in. Yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll touch base with Glenn in the morning. I'm curious. Yeah, Scott, we, we should we should give BVH a call too and just touch base with them. 
Yeah, BVA. Um, I mean, it's not yeah. a it's not a complicated system. Yeah. So there's not a lot of places that the water is gonna nope. is gonna go. Um, yeah, they they weighed in on the gang bathrooms, but because that was the only issue that was identified. If this is building wide, this is again the first. I think Scott and I have heard of this, so um, that's a different issue than we were thinking yeah. about. So. And we're preparing to expand our um, our services as we transition back to normality. So, um, you know, I think it's a little bit. We don't really have the luxury of time to like wait and wait to see if we can diagnose this and get it fixed. Okay. Yeah, you need hot water. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll we'll give BVH a call and then we'll talk to the plumber and we'll get we'll get right on it. Yeah, we'll see what day the plumber is coming next week. Thank you. Yep. Anything else, Scott? That was it for me. I, I have no. Who was that? Bob. Oh, Bob. Yeah. Um, just to go along with what Camille said. When the bathrooms brought up, it was all, I remember the discussion was all bathrooms. It wasn't just the, uh, the ones outside senior center. The discussion was all the bathrooms. The, Bob, that's fine. When we talked with DPW a few months yeah. ago, we tried to figure out what was going on and we were told it was just to gang bathrooms. And so that's what we focused on. If it's a wider problem, we'll, yeah. we'll look wider. Okay. All right. Dave, anything? Uh, nope, I have no update. Uh, Nancy, invoices. Yep, we have an invoice for Fussett O'Neill for $500. It's invoice number 227198. Move, we approve it. Motion by Alan. Second. I got to buy, I'm not sure. Bob. Bob, discussion. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, nay. Abstentions, it's unanimous. The next one? That's it. Oh, that's it. I thought we had two. Uh, future meetings, the uh, 13th and May 11th. Are we all set? Any conflicts? Nope. Nope. What was it? 13th and what? May 11th. May 11. Okay. Yep. All right. Any other items from the committee? Yep. Is that Bob? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Assuming we can go ahead, we get go ahead we and the well works out and all that works out we still are fine maybe sometime in, Ju uh, in june or july 2021 we can say goodbye it will be done well we don't want to say goodbye i'm gonna miss all you guys <laughs> <laughs> we want to build the we want to build the pool I thought somebody was joking about that, but that's real, huh? No, we're ready to get started on the pool. I did not know that. And it's supposed to be heated with hot water. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it was going to be funded and sponsored by Downs Construction. Whatever it, oh, yeah. Dave, whatever it, whatever it takes, buddy. <laughs> okay, any other uh, oh, boy. items from the committee? If not, are there any public here for public comments? No one from the public. No one from the public. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Motion by Alan. Second. Second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.